if you look at all kinds of stuff written about alcohol fuel, uh, you know, the propaganda end of things, one of the things they always say is alcohol only has 63% of the heating value of gasoline, therefore it must get 30 something percent less miles per gallon. And this gets picked up and repeated over and over and over until people are quoting each other and it's like it's some kind of fact. But in reality, um, this is again an oil company myth that's been you know, promoted for many years. So let me explain why it's a myth and why it's, it's not like that. The, as, as any good myth, there's always a kernel of truth that you build on and then you, you deceive from there. So it's true that alcohol only has about 65% of the heating value of gasoline. Now what is the heating value? Because there's this inference that somehow heating value is equal to mileage. Heating value is what happens when you take a fuel, you burn it completely, and measure how much energy comes off it as heat. So if you were using alcohol to heat your house compared to gasoline, it's true you would only get two-thirds the heat that you would get from gasoline. But <clears throat> we're running cars, we're running internal combustion engines, and that's a completely different proposition. If heating value is all we cared about, then we'd want to run our cars on candle wax because it has twice the heating value of gasoline. But obviously it doesn't work very well as an auto fuel. In fact, diesel fuel has more heating value than gasoline, but you can't run your car on diesel fuel unless it's a diesel engine. So what goes on in an internal combustion engine is very different than heating value. There's a, there is a rough correspondence between the two, but it doesn't actually translate directly to mileage. How much mileage you're going to get on alcohol will depend on how you set up your car to run on it. If you do a real minimal conversion so that you're, you're doing just what the Model A did, which was change the fuel-air mixture, although on a modern car we do it a little differently than turning a knob on the dash, and you change the tuning, which is what the Spark Advance thing was all about, you'll probably lose about 10, 12% miles per gallon, maybe even 15%. So obviously that's a lot less than 30 something percent. There's a number of reasons why this is. First of all, as I pointed out, gasoline, especially modern gasoline, is really a, you know, a dumping ground for a lot of stuff that comes out of uh, oil refineries. Some of it will boil at 80 degrees, you know, at room temperature. I mean, we all know how gasoline will you know, evaporate right at room temperature. But a whole lot of gasoline won't boil till 400 degrees. In other words, tars and gums and varnishes that are also being thrown away in the gasoline. So you get, depending on what's in the gas, you're going to get much different mileage than uh, what it might be on another day. And of course, when they do these studies, they use indoline, which is reference gasoline, which is really perfect stuff. So when they compare it, they tend to get better mileage in these studies than if they use pump gas, which, you know, is really industrial waste products. So there's, there's a certain amount of apples and oranges when it comes to doing the study. Now, when it comes to when it burns in the engine, alcohol has a much wider range of flammability than gasoline does. Gasoline has a very narrow range in which if there's too much gas for a given amount of air, it doesn't run hardly at all. And if there's too little gas for a certain amount of air, it doesn't run very well at all. Alcohol will burn over a much wider range of ratios between air and fuel. So you can run alcohol at a what we call a leaner mixture. In other words, less fuel for a given amount of air than the ideal. The ideal is called the stoichiometric mixture, the theoretical point at which every atom of fuel has a, an equal atom necessary of oxygen so it all burns. But of course, that doesn't happen. That's why we have air pollution. If it worked perfectly, the only thing coming out of the tailpipe of a gasoline car would be carbon dioxide. Why doesn't it happen? Because when fuel goes into an engine, it goes in as particles. These are microscopic little particles. And when you go to burn them, at the outside of the particle, you've got a really good zone where the air or oxygen is very available to the fuel and it burns really well. As you get further into this little droplet of fuel, you get farther and farther from the available oxygen and you get more and more unburned fuel or partially burned fuel byproducts. The hydrocarbons, for instance, that come out of your exhaust pipe in your, your test. So, so in theory, if you could get the particles small enough, you could get gasoline to burn really well. And some of the, the old-fashioned um, vaporizing carburetors, like the Nelson Pogue carburetor from Canada, actually 
you know, when you can get more, more fuel burning, you get better mileage. So the, the Pogue carburetor actually got 100 miles per gallon back when cars were getting 10 or 15. The reason why is that it, it boiled the fuel completely to gas, so it was one molecule, not one particle, and it really burned well. Now, gasoline was made differently back then. It was by the skimming method, not the cracking method nowadays. So all the, the high boiling point junk that's in gasoline nowadays wasn't there when Pogue made his fantastic carburetor. So you couldn't do that nowadays. You couldn't easily vaporize gasoline to make that happen. But alcohol is really interesting. It boils at one temperature. It boils at about 173 degrees. So something we can do with alcohol, for instance, that's different than gasoline, is we can heat it up so that it's almost boiling when it goes into the engine. And then it takes very little additional engine energy from, from the warm engine to make it really evaporate more completely and we get more complete burning. The other thing that's really important that's different about alcohol is that gasoline is a hydrocarbon. And what did I say is in alcohol? Oxygen. The reason why it gets less heating value is the remaining quantity is oxygen, and that's not counted as a fuel. It's consumed, so it's not counted as a fuel. But what it means is you've got oxygen in this particle. So the fuel burns more completely, and you get much better efficiency. So the average gasoline engine, and I'm going to back up and give you a little illustration here. If you came from Mars, and this is an internal combustion engine, OK? Now, if you were from Mars and you looked at this thing and say, well, let's see, in this end goes fuel. And well, what comes out of that fuel, 65% of the energy, becomes heat, which goes out through the radiator, through the engine oil, which is really hot, and is lost in friction. So those are the outputs, the main outputs from the fuel. Now, also about 25% of the fuel turns a shaft. In other words, does some work. So if you were a Martian and you looked at this machine, what would you say this machine was made for? Heating. This is a great heater. Okay? But for getting down the road, it's not very efficient. Most of this heat is the exhaust, I'm sorry, friction of the exhaust, is unburned fuel. And some of it is, um, just because of the nature of internal combustion, some of it's going to be wasted no matter what. Now, alcohol burns very differently in a car than gasoline. When you burn the alcohol, it burns very completely, and less of the energy is wasted as heat. So what would be some of the things you'd expect to find then if it's having less heat, less waste heat? The engine runs cooler. The engine runs cooler. And in fact, alcohol burns at about 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, where gasoline is about 1,350 and up. So the combustion temperature is much lower on alcohol because of the complete burning. Now, the other reason why this is cooler is a certain amount of the energy is converted because this is a, it has hydrogen, oxygen, and this is true of gasoline too, by the way, but more so with, al with alcohol is a lot of this turns into water vapor. Now, if you, take a, if you take water, one unit of water, and you turn it, boil it into vapor, it expands a great deal. In fact, it expands 1,700 times. So 212 degree water compared to 212 degree steam takes up 1 1,700th of the space of the steam. So that's called the latent heat of vaporization or the phase change where water goes from a liquid to a gas. And that expansion to a gas, for instance, is what powered steam engines. And of course, it has an effect on powering your car down the road. So alcohol produces more water than gasoline because of its chemical structure and does it in a way that gives you some usable power and takes it away from the waste heat. So I'll give you some good examples of that. When I used to run my 53 Chevy on alcohol, basically we put a piece of cardboard in front of the radiator all winter because we didn't need any cooling at any time. We, in fact, once we did that, we took the fan off the vehicle. Now, fans back then, it's not so true anymore. Fans back then took like 15 horsepower to run and were a, huge, were a pretty good drag on your mileage. 
Nowadays, we have electric fans, so it uses a lot. So that, that difference is not as great. On motorcycles, I used to have a dirt bike, 350 Honda dirt bike. I broke all the cooling fins off the motor because it was too cold otherwise. And if it gets too cold, the alcohol turns into bigger droplets of fuel and you don't get as good a mileage. So I broke all the heating, the cooling fins off because I didn't need them. That's how much cooler alcohol occurs. Now, of course, heat is your, one of your main engines, engine fatigue issues. So lower you know, temperatures in your engine make your engine last longer. Um, Let's see. There's one other thing. That is that the combustion chamber temperatures being lower knocks out nitrous oxide production. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, in the case, and we'll get to, well, we can go to emissions now. 